As hectic and stressful living in today's society can be, we manage to cope and even thrive. At least we have a future. But what future does a prisoner of conscience in China have? Imagine what it must be like to know that at any moment you could be slaughtered for your organs. It's a terrifying prospect. If you are being held prisoner in a labor camp such as Masanjia in Laoning Province, Northeast China, you could very likely be added to the live organ bank that feeds the communist regime's organ transplant industry. According to Wikipedia, organ transplantation in China began in the 1960s. Exactly when live organ harvesting began there is hard to tell. But there is now a mass of evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that since the mid-1990s, the Chinese government has used countless prisoners of conscience as a live organ bank. Innocent people have been subjected to blood testing and physical checkups to determine the compatibility with patients in need of a liver, kidney, heart, or other transplant. When suitable matches are found, the prisoners are murdered by harvesting their vital organs in secret operations. Here we can see what various human organs were selling for in the transplantation market a few years ago. In 2006, two prominent Canadian human rights lawyers, David Kilgore, former Secretary of State for Asia Pacific, and human rights lawyer David Mattis, focused their skills and efforts in a two-month investigation of forced organ harvesting. They published their findings in the book Body Harvest, followed in 2009 by an updated version titled Body Harvest, the Killing of Falun Gong for Their Organs. Starting in 2006, right after allegations emerged that a large number of Falun Gong practitioners had been killed to supply China's organ transplant industry, Investigative writer and human rights defender Ethan Gutman began writing about organ harvesting. In August 2014, Gutman published the inside story of China's organ transplant business called The Slaughter, Mass Killings, Organ Harvesting, and China's Secret Solution to Its Dissident Problem. The following clips are from an excellent and comprehensive video that chronicles the history of forced live organ harvesting in China in great detail. China is the most populated nation on Earth and home to a booming organ transplant industry. However, over the past decade, reports have emerged that the majority of organs are not sourced from death row prisoners and donations, as stated by officials, but rather from innocent prisoners of conscience murdered on demand. Researchers across the globe are uncovering new evidence that shows the true nature and scale of these abuses. In June 2016, three independent investigators jointly published a 680-page report of irrefutable evidence. China, to my knowledge, is the only country in the world where the government-run industrial program kills people and sells their organs. Endless hospitals in here. We go into them in great detail. We're talking about a large uh, hospital, endless amounts of uh, transplant surgeons and uh, transplant teams. I was really surprised how high the number was. I mean, it's, it, as I say, it's multiplied uh, between 6 and 10 of the official figures. Killing for organs is making a major appearance across media outlets all over the world. I think, Gina, the first thing before you, you believe or you decide whether or not you want to believe, is you have to learn the facts. The facts are there, the books are there, the research is there. Read it. Once you read it, I'm sure there will be no other way for you but to believe it. And we have to, we, I'm talking about the physician, have all to be together in order to stop it immediately. So why haven't more people heard about this? The Chinese Communist Party has gone to great lengths to hide the atrocities against Falun Gong practitioners. Human rights groups are barred from forced labor camps. Foreign journalists have been assaulted, their informants imprisoned, and their companies threatened. Years can go by without a major news story on Falun Gong, even though its practitioners constitute the largest group of prisoners of conscience in the world. It's clearly up to people of good conscience and compassion to take action.
wonder why this thing, this crime lasted for almost 20 years and uh, the thing is still going up. Um, they, I think uh, some of the people, I can see people's expectation, they wish that we have much stronger action to take to end the organ harvesting. Uh, it's a shame to the human society to let this crime continue for so long and we still don't have a very effective solution to stop it. Actually, we do. We just need the people to put in effort into it right. and then make it happen. The phrase never again was coined as a result of the Holocaust that murdered over 6 million Jews by the German Nazi regime between 1942 and 1949. Unfortunately, never again has become once again because many humans have not enlightened to the all-important truths that human life is sacred, that we are our brother's keeper, and that the universe keeps a strict moral accounting of human behavior. Thank you.